Hello and welcome to the Proverbs Daily Devotional. Today we're going to get into Proverbs and we're going to be talking about a potentially a pretty well-known verse and it's about guarding our heart. So let's get into it. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 20 through 27 reads as such, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are like to those who find them, <clears throat> and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path for your feet and be steadfast in all of your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left and keep your foot from evil. The heart, it's not the organ in your chest, but it's the center of your inner being, our center of our mind, our emotions, our will, if you may. It is under attack by the enemy and siege by dark forces intent to lead us astray <clears throat> and they scheme ways to trip us up so they they sometimes send little subtle hints or subtle baits so to speak they look for weaknesses hoping to get in so they can bring you under their control if we look around we can see the stories of people that struggle with like substance ab ab abuse addictions adultery abandonment even fraud and double lives that come out and wreck everyone around them. Every one of them have something in common, a heart that ultimately became corrupted, beginning with the small things and gradually building and getting deeper and deeper into it. Solomon even says this is a matter of life and death. In Proverbs 4.22 says, For they are like to those who find them. The center of this message in this passage is in verses 23 through 27. Number one, it spells out what we must do. That's in verses 23, the first part of 23. It, number two, it spells out why we must do it. That's 23, the latter part of it. And it also shows how we can do it. That's in 24 through 27. So let's look at this. This proverb is, again, one of the my son proverbs that Solomon had, and we are to turn our ear to his words and keep them within our heart. Let's look at Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And let's look at these important parts of this verse. First is guard your heart. This is the command, the instruction for us. Number two, above all else, that shows how important or the urgency of this command. And then number three, four, this gives us the reason for the command in the first place. The Hebrew writers often used word order to emphasize certain ideas. And they would place the most important uh, parts of the sentence um, or the most important part at the beginning of the sentence. So when Solomon placed above all else at the beginning, he fully intended to make that the strong part of the sentence. The Hebrew word or verb translated guard is natsar, meaning to preserve or to keep. The word is commonly used in wisdom literature of the Bible, which Proverbs is one, to show God as the shepherd of his people. And as the shepherd watches over his flocks and he keeps them safe, protected by, uh, from harm by predators, and supplies their needs. Much like a watchman in a watchtower of a city, they're looking for those who would do them harm. So we must keep our guard. Now let's talk about the why, the second part of it. <clears throat> it's an important part of guarding our, our heart. As this verse says, for everything you do flows from it. This is indicating it's coming from our inner self, the heart. 
So the inner self is, very, is the very source of our lives. The Hebrews regarded life as the sum total of person's deeds. They thought in very practical terms, and, and wisdom wasn't determined by what someone knows, but what they do. So maybe I, if you would allow me to make a modification to a well-known phrase from the movie Forrest Gump, wisdom is as wisdom does. The Hebrews would consider a life as what a person chose to do or become. Like a structure, we build our life, and by our actions over time, we make something that can be seen. Considering one of Solomon's earlier Proverbs, uh, chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And then in Proverbs 3, 6, it says, In all, my, all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. All of this points to the will of God in discovering it and more importantly living it. We must guard our hearts and we must keep out anything that could cause danger to our heart which is our stronghold. We must seek his knowledge, his character, his values and more importantly his will. If you allow me I want to share with you uh, C.S. Lewis's uh, screw tape letters that he wrote. Um, it's if you haven't know if you don't know anything about them, it's uh, a collection of letters that uh, C.S. Lewis wrote up, uh, created, uh, indicating um, correspondence between a senior devil, so to speak, and a more junior uh, devil that was just learning the ropes. It was uncle. It was actually an uncle nephew relationship. And it was Uncle Screwtape, and his nephew was Wormwood. So let me, I want to share with you the um, uh, Screwtape letter number 12. And in the last part of that um, letter, it states this. Um, and they're talking about, um, uh, at first, you know, the, the nephew is saying that, you know, he's wanting to report spectacular uh, evil and all the stuff with this. Um, and you got to keep this in mind that, that it's a, uh, they're referring to the enemy as being God and us as Christians. So the, he's, uh, he's, you know, training his nephew. And he says at, uh, at the end of um, letter 12, it says, you will say that these are very small sins. And they're just talking about some different things and how he's to nudge him away. And doubtless, like all young tempters, you are anxious to report spectacular wickedness. But do remember, the only thing that matters is the extent to which you separate the man from the enemy. And the enemy would be God. It does not matter how small the sins are, provided that their cumulative effect is to edge the man away from the light into nothing. Murder is no better than cards if cards will do the trick. Indeed, the safest way to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, and without signposts. Your affectionate un uncle, Strutate. And that it gives us a pretty good indication of, of that's basically guarding our heart. And that's what... Uh, that's why Solomon was so emphatic about this. Um, so we must use God's word by reading and applying it, more importantly. And by doing so, we will know the mind of God deeply. And we will gain discernment to know how best to guard our heart. To do this, Solomon gave us some ideas and instructions on how we can guard our heart. Number one, keep our life and mouth pure. That's in verse 24 that we read earlier. Number two, keep your eyes where you want to go. That's in verse 25. And then the third one is to make uh, sure we stay on the path. That's verses 26 and 27. So keeping our life and mouth free of lies and deceit, we also need to keep ourselves away from others to do that. If we allow others to speak falsely, and, and potentially deceive us, we can lose our way. Even when others make their, um, uh, what they say, 
they, they try to make what they say appear true. We also need to keep our eyes on the goal, where we want to go. We can get misled by false directions, which can take our eyes off the road or off the goal. God's word and God's spirit gives us the path and direction we need to get going and to be where we're, to, to stay on that path. Don't veer from it. Let's keep our roadmap handy and refer to it often, which will be God's word. And if we keep on the path, we will be in the center of God's will for our lives. We have a destination. God created it for a reason and a purpose. And, and created us for that reason and purpose. Let's read Psalms 139 verses 13 through 16. It'll be, uh, we'll talk about that very aspect. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You probably have heard that phrase right there. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was uh, made in a secret place. And when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. The key to guarding our heart is walking in righteousness and obedience and knowing God personally. And through experience, um, we can experience his fullness. We do that by living his will and shutting out all the distractions from our path. Don't settle for anything less than God's best. Thank you for joining me today, and we'll look for you next time. God bless you.